So thanks everyone for being here. Um, I do appreciate you being here today. We're gonna talk about the pullback opportunity in charts, how we define those, how we trade those here in hit and run candlesticks and right way options. And if you guys have questions as we go along here, please feel free to ask. I may repeat the question for the recording so others can understand what the question was. But let's get into it here and talk about the PBO. So one of the first things that I want to clarify when it comes to the PBO is I want to I want to talk about the importance of the pattern. Okay, so if we look uh, for pullback opportunities, we always want to start with some kind of a trend, whether it be an uptrend or a downtrend in the stock. We want to be searching and looking for the trend. Now, it is my opinion, and you guys can disagree with me completely, that's fine, but it's my opinion that a trend doesn't begin until the first confirmation of a lower high. That's where the trend begins. And I wanna make sure that this trend is above, for me, any downtrend in the market, if there's been a downtrend going on here in the market, that we've broken that downtrend to the upside and we're holding as support. And I also wanna see, 99% of the time, I wanna see that the stock is actually above its 50-day moving average, okay? So the 50 SMA. I want to see that we're above that for the majority of these pullback opportunity trades. So the pullback opportunity is really pretty simple. We, we look for that stock that's trending, and then I look for a couple of patterns within that trend. First being that nice little pullback where we get that controlled little pullback. We're holding our trend and we're possibly holding a support level in the chart. If I can get a support level and the trend to coincide, I have a better, stronger trade. So for example, if the stock were to move up from here and then pull back and I find this price support and a buy signal and trend coming together here, I, as a general rule, have a better setup, a stronger potential setup for more upside in the chart. Now, when you trade the PBO, you have to get comfortable with being patient. Being patient and being disciplined to your trade st strategy. And what I mean by that is we don't want to chase these moves already underway. If we chase these moves underway, we're actually messing up the entire trade strategy, okay? Because how many times have you guys ever chased a trade like that, ended up buying it? Because we do this a lot as traders, uh, at least early on. I did this a lot. I would see that pullback, and I would see a buy signal here, but I would be worried about this area of price resistance, so I wouldn't take the trade. And I would wait for so much confirmation that the stock was going to break through there and go up that I would end up buying the stock almost directly or within a day or two of when the stock would get its pullback, stopping me out for a loss because I waited too long. Now, the purpose of buying that PBO is for the low risk entry. That's what we're looking for in the trade. And would you guys agree if we have a nice trend in a stock and we see that stock performing pretty nicely up that trend, would you guys agree that the lowest risk position in that trade is when we get those pullbacks to those trend areas, support areas, and we see buyers stepping in. Because right in here, I can place my stop loss on that trade. And if this trade were to fail, I take a very small risk in the trade. But if I were to wait for this stock to break out, and isn't this what most of the books tell us to do? 
trade to buy the breakout. And when we buy that breakout, we might get a one or two day move to the upside in it, but then we immediately get that pullback that we either have to set through and suffer through. And a lot of folks that struggle with this end up getting stopped out for a loss in that pullback that occurs during that period of time. And what they ended up doing by buying it up here is just simply increasing their risk. Whoops, simply increasing their risk to their stop loss in the trade. So we want to buy at or near price support and trend. That gives us our lowest risk entry into the trade. <clears throat> okay. Now, some of the questions I get all the time about this, well, how do we manage the trade? How do we enter the position? Those kind of things. Let's let's take a trade like this. The the trend is is moving up. The stock is is starting to show us good positive signs. We moved up. We pulled back. We find that buy signal in here. Okay. When it comes to putting these trades on and the rules around trading these trades, it comes down to your personal risk tolerance in a position. And every stock is different. I get the question all the time, well, what constitutes a buy signal? Okay, we all know what a bullish engulfing candle looks like. We know what a morning star pattern looks like. We know what a kicker pattern looks like. We know what an inside day looks like. All the different candle patterns out there that may be setting up. <clears throat> okay, now what we need to be looking for is we need to be looking for that low risk entry that we see those buyers stepping up into the trade. Now, when I'm doing this, I wanna have some relative confidence in the direction of the market. I don't wanna be buying a whole bunch of um, pullback opportunities if I'm not confident in the market direction. Because when we're not confident in the market direction, we can easily catch that trade that's just failing up at its high and could easily pull back. We want that confidence that the market is moving in a direction, that the stock is holding a nice clean trend, and we can enter that position carefully or correctly. So what we look for is we look for where we want to enter that trade. So if we enter that trade right here in our price, the first thing we need to do is we need to calculate where our... Um, stop loss is and our stop loss tells us how much risk we have in the trade okay we should never ever enter a trade whether it's a pullback opportunity whether it's any of the strategies that we talk about here in hit rent candlesticks and right way options we should never ever enter a trade until we understand the risk that this trade is providing. <clears throat> okay. I get questions all the time. Well, um, Doug, is this a buy signal? Doug, is, is this an entry? Doug, is this a PBO opportunity? And my answer back is always, well, is it a PBO opportunity for you or me? See, if you don't do this calculation yourself, you don't know if this is a trade for you. You know, let's say this was a trade like Google and the place, and this could be a very small candle here, but you place a trade in Google here, enter that trade and your stop loss is here, and that trade has a risk of a thousand bucks. If you don't calculate that risk, you don't know how much you're putting at risk in the trade. And consequently, you're always going to be emotional about the trade. We have to follow a set of rules. So every trader needs to think about their risk tolerance. What is their tolerance to risk? And when I, when I usually explain risk tolerance, I want to go into the idea... <clears throat> 
that your risk tolerance is what you can lose in a trade and it doesn't bother you. Now, a lot of folks will say, well, hey, I lose a buck. I lose a dollar. I don't like it. I didn't say that you didn't that you like it. But you can live with it. It's something that, you know, it's part of the business. You can lose that amount of money on the trade and it's acceptable. If you don't know what your risk tolerance is, and for some people, $1,000 on a trade is no problem. For others, it may be 200 Others, it may be 100 You've got to find out what your risk tolerance is for a trade and never take a trade that's beyond your risk tolerance. Because as soon as you do that, you're compromised from the beginning of the trade. You're emotionally compromised in the trade. You have, you've, you've lost your edge right at the beginning. You did the technical analysis work, you know, good for you, but you didn't follow through to hold on to your edge in the trade by knowing what the risk was of that position. So you compromise the trade from the beginning, and if that stock pulls back, guess what happens? You panic, you micromanage, you stop out of the trade. How many of you have ever done that? That occurs, you stop out of that trade, and then immediately you see that stock bounce back up two or three days later. It was a winning trade, you picked the right trade, but you micromanaged yourself to a loser. <laughs> Malcolm, Malcolm questions, not, not including today. Yeah, and, at any time, we've all done that, right? I've done it. <clears throat> and we have to learn to avoid doing that by following the set of rules and creating that edge to hold the trade, that we manage that trade correctly right from the beginning. Okay, now the next question I get all the time, and I don't know why this is such a hard question for most people. <clears throat> well, I do know why. <clears throat> the next question I get all the time is, where do I take profits? That is also a personal decision for your trading plan that you need to put together. You need to know this before you enter the trade. What is your goal for the position? What are you trying to achieve? So many times we allow greed to get in the way. How many of you have ever turned a nice winning trade into a loser? because you were just sure there was more money coming in it. You know, one that would get me all the time, all the time, is I would get into a trade. And all of a sudden I open up my account in the morning and that trade has, you know, $500 profits in it. Okay. And I'm thinking, right on, man. I finally, I got a good one here. This is looking good. I go look at the rest of my positions. I go do a few other things. I come back five or 10 minutes later and I look at my account and this trade is now $400. And I say, now, wait a minute, I want 500. I had 500, I want 500. Let's wait, uh, let's, come on, uh, give me 500. How many of you have done that and watch this thing bleed out even almost to zero or to a loser because you want 500. That number was stuck in your head and you didn't take the profit. This used to affect me all the time. And the reason is, <laughs> Bob is laughing, says, have been there. <laughs> and Matt is saying, not including today again. Yeah. Um, that is, is something that plagues a lot of traders. And the reason that is the case is because we have no plan. We have no idea where we want to be out of the trade. We have no idea what constitutes a win for us. So one of the things that I do is I work from the basis of a goal. What am I trying to achieve? 
what do I want to see happen? And you guys see me do this a lot in right way options. I sell a position as it's going up. I'm not worried about catching the the first or the highest print in the market. I don't care. See, if I've bought the trade right, bought the trade correctly, and managed that trade to a winner, I don't care to try and pull every single penny out of that trade. I've done my job. Now my job is to find the next trade and do it again, and do it again, and do it again. But one of the things that I find when I'm working with people and coaching people is because they're trying to micromanage this trade to every single penny, they sit and stare at one or two or three trades at a time, missing everything else that's happening in the market because they want to squeeze a few more cents out of this one and miss half a dozen of other, other really good trades that are setting up today. Anybody guilty of that? You get that winning trade that looks really good in the entire day. You spend staring at that chart wiggling around. Because you want to squeeze a few more pennies out of that trade. What we need to be doing is thinking about, well, did it reach my goal? Where am I at? Taking profits or setting in a, a, a trailing stop or just closing the trade altogether and looking for the next trade. That trade is finished. We did our job. We made money on the trade. And trading is one of those weird things where traders will beat themselves up <clears throat> How many of you have ever done this? Get in a trade, sell the trade, make 500 bucks. Look back the next day and see it went up a whole bunch more and beat yourself up. Oh man, I suck as a trader. I suck. I suck as a trader because look, it just, it just kept going up. I could have made a whole bunch more money. When the truth of the matter is you've done your job, you bought it right, you sold it a profit. That's our goal every single day. David's saying he has bruises all over from that. Yeah, no kidding, we all have. Right? We, need, we wanna stop beating ourselves up for doing our job. Okay, so oftentimes I have a goal in, the tr in a trade that I'm looking for. I want to see a specific profit because I know I've calculated out what I'm trying to achieve every week, every month to reach my annual goal. Now that doesn't mean I can't beat my annual goal or that I shouldn't be shooting for bigger profits when I get the opportunity, but the way I do that is if I put on a trade, let's say I'm trading three contracts here on this trade, that moves up and I take two of those contracts off to reach my goal profit in the trade and I may let that last one run to see where that will go. But I've done my job, I've put money in my account, that's what I'm supposed to do. My job is to grow my account, not to be a hero, not to try and pick the top. It's to consistently grow my account. Now, consistency happens real easily with the pullback opportunity trade if you don't mess it up with micromanagement. So say, for example, we find that rising trend, we find that good entry signal, we set our stop loss here, our risk is acceptable in this trade, we put that trade on, and you have a goal of some, some level in here, 10, 15, 20% in that trade. Some stocks may require a fairly substantial move, to, uh, particularly a stock. If it's an option trade, though, it can be a relatively small move and give you a 20% return. You should be thinking about that number 
before that trade gets there? What's the acceptable place to start pulling profits out of the trade? Because another one of the things that messes us up, right, is the pressure of the trade. Once a stock is really going up good for us, how many of you feel that pressure on that trade? It's one of the reasons why we sit and stare at that screen, right, when, when we're in a profitable trade. Because that pressure is building on that position. If you feel that pressure, it's time to start taking some profits or just close the trade. Okay, be searching for those goal levels. And you guys saw me do this the other day on just a four hour chart. Entered the trade on a four hour chart, set a 10, 15 and 20% location in the chart and took profits the very next morning when it popped up into there. Didn't question it, didn't do anything. It popped up in there and hit my goal out of the trade. And I'm glad I did because the rest of the day that stock pulled back. And I would have been in a losing trade had I not just taken that profit at that goal. So does that make sense, guys? So I've, I've kind of given you that clue on how you put together the entry of that trade given the, you the clue on how you manage the outcome of that trade to a profitable result. And one of the reasons this trade strategy is one of my favorites is because the trend is already in play. You see, institutions are, are the ones that decide when a stock is going to continue to trend. It's not retail traders. And if they're going to continue to support a stock, then we get that opportunity to just follow that trade up. So we increase the odds of our trade by following the trend, not predicting the trend, following the trend. We increase our odds by buying at or near price support. We increase our odds by planning that trade and making sure there's an acceptable risk tolerance in there for us on that trade. We increase our edge. We fail on any one of those aspects. We don't follow the trend. We don't follow a good entry signal. We get emotional about it. We chase a trade. We do something else. We've compromised that trade from the beginning. And the market will typically punish us if we do that. So just like in any trade strategy, you have to be disciplined to your plan. Okay, disciplined to your trade. <coughs> now what I've shown you here so far has just been that perfect trade where the stock pulls back and we get that buy signal. How many times have you seen that trade do something like this? It moves up sharply, gets a sharp pullback, and then rests a couple, three days. I will tell you honestly, this is one of my favorite PBO opportunities right here. I love to see after that pullback, we get two or three days of little teeny tiny doji candles resting after that pullback. And it's just marking time as it moves over here to the trend. Those are awesome trades because I can see those coming way ahead of time. That gives me the opportunity to set a price alert on the chart and wait for that trade to pop. I don't have to chase the trade after it's already started to move. I can find it ahead of time, place the alert, and wait for the trade to come to me. I love those kind of trades. Okay, you can do the same thing over here, but you almost have to think a little bit counter to the market. Where most people are, are trying to chase a trade that's already popping, I'm doing the opposite. I'm trying to set up the trades that are pulling back to my support levels, to places in the chart where I'm gonna be interested in them. And then I set those price alerts. 
I'm not wanting to chase the stock that's already moving. I want the low risk entry. See, if I'm chasing, I'm always opening up myself to more risk in the trade. Okay, now does that make sense, guys? Those patterns pay them pave the way for really great trades. Now the PBO opportunity, I also consider this pop out of the box. <clears throat> Oftentimes you'll see in an upward trend, we might get a kind of severe rally in the stock. And then we go into more of a sideways choppy pattern for a period of time. We rest right in here. That pop out of the box pattern says that there's no buyers above, there's no sellers below. And because we are in a current trend, we're favoring the move to the upside. So we're watching this trade, waiting for that next signal that the stock is ready to resume its trend. Okay. Love those patterns. Now, someone just <laughs> suggested that I show a downtrend and I, that was the next step here. These patterns are exactly the same in downtrending charts, okay? But one, one other thing I want to bring up here, we've all heard the term bull flag, right? That bull flag occurs when that stock moves up and then we get that pullback, right? This is the bullish flag that we're looking for, that little flag on this flagpole, and we're waiting for that next signal in the trade. So you guys can see this pattern is, is nothing new. There's nothing new under the sun here when it comes to the market. We're looking at the same patterns that have always been in the market, but what we're trying to do is define an edge, a strategy where we can take profit from this. Okay, on a consistent basis. Okay, <clears throat> so let's take a look at a downtrend. Stock is downtrending. We have those same patterns in play. We get that failure, and then we get that rally back to resistance, also known as the bear flag, right? That bearish rally back to resistance, and then we wait for that failure pattern. Like we wait for the buy signal, we wait for the failure pattern. Now, once again, this pattern proves itself to be much more successful if it coincides with a price resistance over here. Stock had moved up and there's a price resistance over in here in the chart. Coincides with the downtrend and that resistance. At the beginning of the trend, we're looking for that lower high. That failure that will send us down to that new low position. Those trades can also put in those tight consolidations. The pop out of the box down pattern where we get that sideward con sideways consolidation usually after a fairly steep move down. And what what happens is, is we're just we're just tight kind of consolidating that move, resting a little bit when that occurs. So we're looking for those same patterns now. Now, when, when I'm putting together trades on this, remember my stop loss on these trades have to be just above. I want that low risk situation here. Where am I going to close this trade if I'm wrong? If the stock moves up, gives me a little pullback and then bounces right back up, I gotta be out of that trade. So I want to have a low risk entry on this trade for a short position. Now, I'll tell you honestly, it's a little bit more challenging to do on a down market because there's more volatility in the down market. Okay, there's more volatility in the down market. And so we get more swings back and forth. But the patterns are still there. They're still very valid. Okay. We can still find them pretty easily. 
So from this, let's take a look at some charts, okay? And let's let's go so, to some actual charts and let's take a look at some patterns. Now, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you a chart with just a couple of moving averages. And I want to show this chart, I wanna remove lines from the chart. I wanna clean this thing up and I'm even gonna get rid of price. Okay, and then I wanna start looking at the price pattern. Now, can you guys see in just this two line moving average chart, this is an eight exponential moving average and a three exponential moving average. Can you guys see how the pattern develops itself? How we get these nice price levels that occur with trend and price support and buyers stepping in right in here. Okay, so we're looking to enter those trades at the right time at the right price. The same thing in a failure. The three and the eight provide me those patterns. We call this a three eight trap or the PBO opportunity. How about the short side trade? Short side trade stop loss right up here, looking for that failure pattern to move us down. Okay, now there's a couple things that you need to know about this. And here's something that trips up people all the time, all the time. When you look at this chart right here on the daily chart, half of the people that are listening to me right now say, well, then the diamonds must be in a buying opportunity because the three crossed above the eight. And I'm going to tell you that's wrong. And why is it wrong? Because when we get that three crossing the eight, aren't we chasing that move up already? It's already moved. We're chasing the move. So we want to be patient and wait for that next rest, that consolidation, that pullback that proves support. On that first cross up, we have no assurance in that first cross up that that will hold. And if we chase into that trade, we will often catch the pullback that sweeps us right back out with the volatility of those moves. So we wanna wait for proof that we can hold as support. We get that rest, consolidation, or pullback, proof we hold as support, buyers step in, and that's what creates these potential entry points in the chart for long trades and for short trades. Okay. Now, if you want, you can add in another moving average. And you guys have seen me use a 34 exponential or a 17 exponential moving average. If I turn on a 34 exponential moving average in here and put that on, it helps me identify trend. I'm on the right side of the market. It's okay if you are a little bit more of a shorter term trader, use a 17. And actually, the 17 really works better for the longer term trader because it tightens up. Those three moving averages will show you trend. It'll show us when we are officially beginning a trend. It will show us when we officially break an uptrend. Okay. <coughs> um, Glenn's asking questions about conditional orders and Glenn, this class isn't about that. What I'd really recommend is if you go over to um, the members page, there's a class in there on um, on that kind of stuff in on the members page. Um, in in the videos I, i've covered this many many times on how to set set those stops based on options pretty easily okay and I, i've gone through it over and over and over so make sure check check those videos and or ask during a normal live session and i'm happy to explain it again okay
So let's take a stock that's showing us trend. Let's take a shop stock like um, shop has been one of those that's just been a really, really strong stock. Okay, really strong stock here lately. And you can see those price patterns, those pullback opportunities. So first off, we cross, break down, no trade here. There's no short trade here, there's no long trade here. The stock turns around and comes back. There's no long trade here, there's no short trade here. The trade occurs when we get that resting pullback and we find buyers holding support. There's our trade. Same thing is true here. We move up, we separate from the eight, we get kind of stretched out in this move. We don't want to chase this trade, we want to wait for the next entry that pullback, look for the opportunity into that trade. Okay, those are the pullback opportunities that we're looking for. Those nice, simple, <clears throat> clean patterns that show up over and over in charts. If I put the price action on the chart, and I'm going to keep price action relatively dim so that we can focus on those moving average patterns, you can see those entry signals starting to occur in these areas. Those price candles starting to show us that bullish price action in these areas. And it doesn't matter how far back we go, it's the same pattern that repeats over and over and over. Now, not every pattern is going to be a great trade. Okay, let me explain that. You can see this pattern right over here. Let me zoom up on that for just a little bit. This one had a very low risk entry into it. This nice little resting pullback, low risk entry into this trade, the stock pulls back into here, buyers step up, we have a low risk entry into this trade. Most people could handle that risk. In the position. But there are trades that don't set up as cleanly and it all depends on you as a trader whether or not you want to take that position. For example, this trade right in here, where the stock breaks down below, comes back up. Now remember, I'm going to tell you that the best trade is over here. Not the cross down and cross back up. Until we get that test or consolidation of support for that entry. Okay, so it all depends on you as a trader. How about this one here where we cross down and violently cross back up? If you identify this pattern early enough and place a price alert on this chart, you could have easily entered this trade with a relatively low risk entry. But let's be honest, we're not gonna catch every trade in the market. Sometimes we see this when the stock has already made its move. Don't chase that trade. Because even at this point, if you place your stop loss where it should be, you've, you may have increased a risk in this trade that is not acceptable to you in the position. Let the trade go. Wait for the next one. They're always here. You go through charts. These patterns are always here in every market. Okay, every market. <clears throat> if I'm gonna hold a trade, Stella, let's say I, I enter this trade here. I got into this position, alerted on this trade, my stop loss is here and I get into this position. First off, remember, I'm gonna have some kind of a goal up here. Okay, And I'm probably, on any directional trade, going to be peeling some of that trade off, taking my 20% or whatever it is on that trade. If I were a single contract trader, I'm out. I've done my job, I made 20%, I walk away. No need to even move the stop loss. Okay, but let's say I have multiple contracts on this. 
I have a three contract trade. I sell two up here, make my 20%. Then I move my stop loss to protect the rest of that move so I don't turn this trade into a loser. I'll be a little bit, I can be a little bit more flexible in that trade because I've already made my goal on the, on the trade, okay? I can give it a little bit more room in that position because my profit has already been guaranteed. Does that make sense? <coughs> and that's a step a lot of people forget, right? Because why, why do we forget that? Because all of a sudden we have a winning trade and we let what take over? Greed takes over. We want to squeeze every single penny out of here. We don't think about our goal anymore. We just want every single cent that we can get. You guys have seen me do this on day trades. I do it all the time on day trades and it's worked out really well. As a matter of fact, it wasn't that long ago on the big sell-off, I took a day trade on, I believe it was the diamonds. Once the trade was up more than 20%, I just set a trailing stop loss. The market kept falling. We ended up making over $800 on that one contract that day. And I stopped looking at it. My job is to make that goal money, to make that, that, so I want to be moving on to the next trade. Okay, so that's another thing that you can do. Sell a couple of those contracts, make your goal money, now set a trailing stop for the rest of it, and now look for the next trade. Because if we're wasting our time focusing on trying to squeeze every penny out of this, we're going to miss opportunities all around us in the, in the market. We have to be productive and efficient in what we do. And it's not productive and efficient if we're staring at a chart, watching it wiggle around, hoping and praying. And watching that chart wiggle around, what does that do to you emotionally? Messes you up, right? As a matter of fact, what most people do, they're watching a wiggle. Well, maybe if I look at an hourly chart, <clears throat> maybe I can time this a little bit. No, maybe, I, maybe it better be the 15-minute chart. And we screw our trades up. We mess up our emotions. And we might as well take our entire plan and light it on fire because we just blew it up. We didn't follow our rules. We didn't stay disciplined to our plan. Right? You, some of you guys have heard this story before. Some of you may have not. But Mike Peterson, a good friend of mine, he spent about a year paper trading, practicing this. Opened up an account with $20,000. And his first year of trading made a 65% return. Do you guys know his biggest trade? The biggest trade. The biggest profit he had that entire year was about a $370 gain. That was his biggest one-time win, and that was an accident. He bought the trade, and it just happened to leap up. That wasn't a plan to make that much money. His average winning trade over the entire year was $120. Can you guys make consistent, do better if you set a goal and trade to that goal? Lots of base hits. That's right. Lots of base hits. I think he said if you listen to the interview that I did with him, I want to say it was September. September of that year, he had 40-some trades. Stock and move up 15, 20% out of there. Find the next trade up 15 to 20% out of there. Up 15 to 20% out of there. 
He just repeated it over and over and over. And because he wasn't focused on trying to squeeze every cent out of every trade, he had tons of opportunity to make money. Does that make sense, guys? Wash, rinse, repeat. Wash, rinse, repeat. Wash, rinse, repeat. Okay. Now think about that. Think about that for a second. And here's the other thing. His win-loss ratio on that was extremely high because at first it was a very good market, but second, because he was being really picky about the trades he took. So let's think about this for a second. <clears throat> how many, let me ask you right now with your current account, how many of you, if you make $100, $125 per trade, how many trades do you need every week to change your trading life? And how many of you have had those kind of profits and let them go away because you wanted more money? You were squeezing it for more money. You didn't have a plan to take that profit. Right? That's what we have to fix. We have to fix that so you're taking those gains, at least partial gains, to reach those goals. You can get those big home run hits, sometimes by letting the rest of that trade run. But you can literally change your trading life by doing base hits over and over and over and over in the market. And following this price pattern will give you those good setups. Be picky about the setups. Don't chase every single one of them. Be picky. Because the pickier we are, do you think with just this simple 3-8 strategy, looking through, I don't know, 20 or 30 charts that you could find more trades than you can actually take? We don't have to chase every stock in the market, do we? We don't have to listen to CNBC and chase the flavor of the day. We have to be disciplined to our rules and our plan and holding on to our edge and just repeating it over and over and over. Okay? Now, here's the fun thing. This works for every time frame. Every single time frame. You take this chart. Let's look at it on a four-hour chart. If you want to be more of a shorter-term trader, can you make money with this chart? <coughs> Same chart, just shorter time frame. How about an hourly? Can you make money on this chart with the hourly? Imagine having picked up this short trade here this morning, right here on shop. You would be up probably on a short term trade, you could be up 30, 40% already on that position using a, a put option. Okay, so we have to look at, we have to pick a time frame, right? Here's the other mistake most people are making. They are trying to be the jack of all trades. They want to trade the 15-minute chart, the hourly chart, the two-hour chart, the five-minute chart. They want to trade the daily charts and the weekly charts. Guys, I'm telling you that doesn't work. If you've never had consistency in your trading before, pick one time frame and trade it. <clears throat> Don't think about changing that time frame until you've gotten very, very good and very, very proficient at making money with that time frame. And here's the thing that's likely going to occur. You're going to go, well, why would I change at all if this is working so well? Why would I need 
another time frame if this just works. I'll just keep doing what I'm doing. I don't have to chase everything around. Right? The fun thing about this pattern is it's the same pattern no matter what time frame it is. So if the market changes, let's say we have that really nice steady bullish market. And we've been trading these simple directional trades for a long time. And then all of a sudden, bam, the market changes. Lots of volatility comes into the market. We can shift. We can see the handwriting on the wall. The market has changed. And we can say, look, my daily swing trades are no longer effective right now with this volatility. So for the next short period of time, I either go to a shorter term chart or a longer term chart to avoid the volatility. We adapt with the market condition. Does that make sense, guys? We have to make that conscious decision that something has changed. The market has changed. My strategy on the daily swings because of the massive volatility that we've seen in the market here recently hasn't been a good strategy. But you can see on a daily chart, or excuse me, on an hourly chart, this has been a very ex effective strategy, making a lot of money. Even going to like the diamonds 15 minutes, I've been calling these trades over and over and over on a diamonds 15 minute chart, successful long and short trades on a 15 minute basis. So we adapt with the market condition but what I don't want you doing is flipping between time frames on these trades. If you've decided, hey, the market's really volatile, I need to adjust to a 15 minute, then adjust to the 15 minute and trade the 15 minute until the market changes again. If you decide, hey, no, I don't like those, I don't like staring at the screen that much, I want to use a four hour chart, great. Pick that four hour chart and trade it. Maybe it's a two hour chart. Maybe it's, maybe you decide, hey, my strategy is just not working right now. I'm gonna back away. That's okay too. We can back away and say, look, until my edge returns, I'm gonna stand aside. I'm not gonna risk my money when I have no edge in the market. So the, can you guys see that the biggest part of being successful at this is the discipline to put together a plan and stick to the plan? It's really nothing more than that. It's that discipline to say, this is what I'm going to do. This is who I am. This is where I feel comfortable. And this is what I'm going to trade. We can't be the jack of all trades. Nobody can. There's too much data being thrown at us all the time. But if we put together a setup, a good plan that we can see confidence in that, there's no market maker that can beat you. There's no institutional change that can beat you. You can make consistent money in the market repeatedly if you stick to your plan. And to me, that gives hope. To every single trader out there that's been struggling, there's a lot of hope in that, right? Nobody talks about this in, the, in this industry. They're always trying to sell some fancy indicator or sell this or sell that, but they're not talking about the simple strategy that actually produces results. And by the way, it doesn't have to be the 3.8 moving average. It can be any moving averages. Pick two moving averages that oppose each other in time and look for the time frame, the strategy where it's setting up and working. You can use any moving averages. It doesn't require the 3.8. doesn't require anything else, but we want the pattern. That most repeatable pattern that occurs in the market. Market trending, stock moves up, pulls back. The peak and valley pattern, the most repeating pattern in the market. OK. 
Okay. That's right, Barry. And the reason that is, is because you, if you don't stick to that plan, you break your discipline, right? You, you, you give up your edge. You built a plan that has an edge because you've seen something in the market that repeats itself over and over. But if we let our emotions get in the way, if we break our discipline, we toss our edge out. Our edge just goes flying away. And then the market punishes us for that. So this pullback opportunity trade, do you guys feel like this could be very successful for you? And I don't care, you know, what moving averages that you use or what you choose to be the best strategy for you. You may want to just look at weekly charts. That's perfectly acceptable. If you want that longer term trade, can you guys see on this weekly chart my setup for AMD? <clears throat> my setup for AMD where I made more than 100% on the trade? It's the same pattern on the weekly chart. Or how about the Disney trade the other day that I'm, I brought up and then I didn't trade and I'm kicking myself for that. The Disney trade on the four hour chart, when I pointed this out to everyone of the four hour signal, stock crosses above, pulls back, holds support, buyers stepped in. Winning trade. This trade made money. And you can see it's setting up again. Let that buy signal show itself in here. And we could have that next winning four hour trade occurring next week. How cool is that? And how much power do you feel when you can begin to see those patterns, understand that setup, and then you just repeat it over and over and over? Same set of rules. So for me on something like this, maybe if you like that four hour, right now is when I would look right, maybe right through here, and say break above there, I wanna know. Break above there, if I have that good buy signal that shows up in here, that pops up, let me know because I want to enter that trade there. I have a low risk to my stop and I can catch that next move, that next wave to the upside. Make sense? So I want to thank you guys for listening to this. Um, and, and hopefully, hopefully you guys are seeing the power of, of just simple trading, simple price patterns, and how it can really change your life as a trader. As long as you put together a disciplined plan that has an edge and stick to it. Stick to your plan. Remember, every time we let emotion, if we let fear, if we let greed come into that trade, we throw away our edge. We just lit that trade on fire and just watch the money burn. Because we gave up our edge, we allowed emotion to dictate our trade rather than the plan that we're following. So I want to encourage everyone, and I don't care if it's the 3-8. I want to encourage everyone, this three-day weekend, if you have the time, sit down and rewrite your trading plan. And I mean write your trading plan down. I want you to go through a bunch of charts. I want you to think about the setups. I want you to think about your risk tolerance. I want you to think about what your goals are, how you're going to achieve what you want to achieve. And then I want you to put it down in a notebook. 
a plan. This is what we're going to do. This is how I'm going to trade. These are the rules that give me an edge. If these rules don't exist, I don't trade. Make that commitment today that you're going to change this stuff. <laughs> Barry's going to make a rule that every time he, he, he breaks his rules, he has to do push-ups. Hey, that's good punishment. <clears throat> good reminder, right? <laughs> Good reminder. But commit. Whether you do it this weekend, whether you do it next week, <coughs> commit yourself to putting together that dedicated plan. You don't have to use these two indicators. Use any indicators you want that give you that price pattern that you see. But put together that plan Set those rules that give you an edge. And let's get busy with doing some professional trading rather than emotional trading. Okay? Sound good? So I want to thank everyone for being here. I truly, truly appreciate it. You guys are awesome. Thanks a ton. And I hope you got something out of this. If you happen to be watching this on YouTube, and this is the first time you've seen one of these videos, if this video makes a difference for you, please do me a favor and make sure and give it a thumbs up and leave a comment on it. Share it with your friends. And if we can be of help to you here at Hit Run Candlesticks or Hit My Options, we would love to do that. We would love to help you see success in your trading. So everyone take care. Have a great afternoon. And we'll talk to you all soon.